Because people want more than just church. The fact is, we don't need another church in this community, do we? When people put money into the offertory, and we thank God for it, I would hope you want that money to go do something. I would hope that you would want that money to transform a life, or to feed a child, or to educate a child. The Samaritans are being used as an example for one very clear reason. The folks that are in charge of how things always operated are not doing very well at this. They're not doing very well at having what they do and how their money flows and how their lifestyle flow changes lives in the community. Don't get me wrong, they've got a machine and that machine works kind of well. But is the machine living out love God, love neighbor? It's not, because why is Jesus using the Samaritans as an example of how it should be? It's one thing that I love being a part of. And it's something that I get that I wear the collar, and I guess the assumption would be that I've always lived some kind of holy life. Y'all can laugh now. Until about four years ago, five years, I think it's about five years ago now. I'm getting old fast. Until about five years ago, don't ask me to give to a church. Don't ask, don't ask me to put money into the offertory. Because I worked in church. I worked on a staff. I knew what the budget was, and I knew where the money went. And it wasn't anything I was excited about. I loved doing ministry, but there wasn't many things I was excited to part with my money over. I mean, we sang songs, great. We brought kids on retreats, okay. I got excited when we went to build someone a, a, a wheelchair ramp, or we went and handed food out. That's what I loved when we started looking at our neighbors and saying, you know, this isn't quite right. That's ministry. It's not paying the bank to own the building. It's not going to staff salary. The money that we put into the offertory helps to hire people. We made a bold risk. We made a bold statement when we took the money that we got from Adams Ridge and we said, look, we're going to start a learning center. And don't don't, don't underestimate what I'm about ready to say because it's true. We're going to hire, what, 12 people eventually for the whole, right? Two classrooms, 12 people. You're going to give 12 people the opportunity to come and do ministry and get paid for it. You're going to give 12 people the opportunity to pay their Duke energy bills, to spend time with their families. You're going to give 12 potential employees the opportunity to bring their child to our learning center for free and we're not going to pay what everybody else is paying. We're going to pay a little bit more than what everybody else is paying because what everybody else is paying is way too low, way too low. We're going to treat them with respect and we're going to love them just as if they were members of our own family. Those are 12 people that we're taking our money and we're investing in those 12 people to hopefully make their lives better. And this particular statement, it'd be great if my money would be actually used to do ministry in the community. I can't tell you how many people actually say this and think this on a Sunday morning that sit in what I would call normal churches, right? Big box churches, where the vast majority of money goes to staff, not to a learning center or to a garden or to feed children in the kitchen. People want more. They don't just want more of the same.